Howdy folks, this is Tim Favreau with another edition of the CDL Podcast. Educating and entertaining you, one mile at a time. Remember to comment, chime in, and tell us your thoughts. This podcast is one man's opinion, not a lecture or a sermon. Also, please help spread the word about our show, and thank you for listening. In today's episode, we're going to cover CB radios and why you should have one in your rig. I'm also going to cover how we can save you time in your daily grind. It's awful hard to plan a detour without one. And how some customers demand that you actually have one with you. I have a lot to cover, so let's get right into it. I was just up at our headquarters in Weedsport, New York, and on my return trip home back to Indiana, I was very glad that I actually had my CB on and I was listening to when I got around Cleveland. For those of you that have driven around Cleveland before, you know the 71-271 bypass over to 90. And I was heading on the 90 west to 271 south and had the radio on when I heard a driver up the road just before 480 tell me for any of the drivers that were on the express bypass, for 271 to get over onto the collector's side, onto the slow side, because it was a very bad accident up ahead. I was very glad he did it, because in that stretch of 271, had I not gotten over about 30 seconds later where the next cutoff was to get onto the collector's side, I would have been stuck in the accident for probably three to three and a half hours. I have some video from my event recorder on this that I will have in the show notes. Please excuse me ahead of time. The SD card on it was not very good. The audio is horrible. So on that portion, if you're going to watch in the show notes, the actual video of what I'm talking about, ignore the audio on it because it cuts in and out about every other second. Unfortunately, that's a side effect when you need to format your SD card more often, and I've been kind of lazy in that, so the audio has suffered. The main part of this is I felt really bad for all of the truck drivers that were taking the bypass and on the express lanes that didn't get that warning like I did, and I believe that that is actually one of the most important reasons why you should have a CB in your vehicle. It doesn't matter what vehicle you have it in. At this time, I had it in my van, which I was using to commute back and forth with instead of a rig, and it was serving the same exact function as if it was in the rig. It doesn't matter where it's at. The point of this whole episode is that you should have one. Now, with my setup, I have uh, a Wilson antenna on mine, and I'm good for receiving and listening to everybody for about 60, 65 miles, usually with no problems at all. And after I had gotten past the accident, um, I was almost to Mansfield up at 30, or an hour away, I should say, and getting ready to head westbound on 30, and I could still talk to the drivers that were still held back up uh, around the outside of Cleveland there for this accident. By the time I got to Upper Sandusky, um, I was about 200 miles away, and I couldn't hear anything from it anymore. But When I was stopped there, it was at Beaver Creek, I wound up fueling up there and ran into another trucker that was behind me who also said the same thing. He could hear those guys and realize that it was a good thing he had his radio on, was able to get over to the other side, not held up in all that traffic. So after I got home the next day, I wound up checking uh, with the Cleveland DOT and asked them how long to or how long it took them to actually clean up that accident. And as you can see from the video, it was a pretty bad accident. The first tractor trailer lost the tandems on his trailer, and the second tractor trailer ran into it at about 60 miles an hour. So there was rolls of paper all over the place from the first trailer falling apart and breaking in the middle, and the second tractor trailer was blocking all of the express lanes, as you can see. It was just an absolute mess. So that, to me, is the number one reason why you should have a CD radio in your rig. I have other reasons that I'll go on to here. They can help save you time in your daily grind. In the cases like this, I got the warning. I was able to divert over. 
and bypass all of the mess. The time it took me to get through from start to finish was about 15 minutes. So that's how long it increased my trip this accident did. But that was the bright side of it. For those people that didn't get off the express lane side, they were stuck in that for hours. And if you're wind up, you know, running out of time for the day, you're short on your 11 or you're running up against your 14 hour wall, this is a very good reason to have a CB radio to listen to this kind of stuff. So you can save your time, plan accordingly, get for detours. And that's not the first time in this area I've actually had this problem. Uh, a couple of years ago, when I was actually moving to Indiana, I had my daughter with me, and we were traveling on that same stretch of 271, when a trucker told me, anybody coming up on the 480 split on 271, you want to take 480 west over to 77 south, and then get back on the 271, uh, because all the traffic's to a complete standstill up here. Uh, we've been stuck for a couple of hours, and they're not opening up the room anytime soon. So if you haven't gotten a 480 yet, take the 480 west. Well, it was amazing timing because I was coming right up on the 480 west exit, so quickly diverted and headed off that way. And that was another time where from the time I got the warning to when traffic got flowing again was about another two to two and a half hours for the people that were tied up there. This was one of the first times that my daughter really saw the advantage of having a CB radio with us. Because most of the time, from her perspective, and I understand this, it's a lot of noise and a lot of aggravation in the background when you're trying to listen to actually find the good parts of the information like this. But that goes along with the type of equipment you have and how you have it set up. Now, I'm not going to endorse any type of particular CB radio today. That's not the point of this episode. The idea is that you have yourself a radio and a good antenna and that the whole system is properly tuned so you get really good receive. If you have good receive, you can wind up setting your squelch level quite high to block out a lot of the background noise. And if your radio has a receive function, you can turn that down and dial your area in to maybe 5, 10 miles if you don't want to listen to all of that background noise. This way you can do like I do, listen to audio books or listen to the radio or something in the foreground with your CB running in the background. And when a driver keys up to say something, you actually hear what he's saying. You can turn down your radio or your audio book or whatever and then engage in talking on the CB to find out all of the relevant information. The time you spend in getting yourself with your radio and your CB set up well for good receive, it'll pay you in a lifetime of saved time. Every year I figure I save myself 20, 30 hours in time where I have to detour around accidents or do things like this due to my fellow drivers passing that information along. And I did the same thing. Um, you'll kind of hear it at the end of the video. While I was traveling down 271 South all the way to Mansfield, I kept telling the northbound traffic about where the problems were so they could relay that information when they got closer to the accident to all of the southbound people traveling on 271. That's the best way truckers can pass information. Let other people know we're coming up to what we saw. Let them know where the bears are. Let them know where the accidents are. Let them know where there's construction problems communicate with the CBs. It just makes all of our jobs that much easier. Another valuable reason for having your CB radio is because a lot of customers demand it today. When you go to scale houses or talking to the loaders on site at places, you absolutely need to have your CB radio. Uh, my current location that I work at, uh, their scale house is on channel 18 and they have two different locations and you can talk to the scale houses at either location on CB channel 18 back and forth. So as you're running back and forth between the two places, it's mandatory for them. And when you're getting loaded and unloaded at both of those places, the loaders also have CB radios. And they can only talk about at most a quarter of a mile. So they can't talk to the other scale houses. But they have the handheld CB so they can talk to you in your truck while you're dumping the load. 
you actually have a spotter behind you in the loader and he's watching for you as you're dumping. That way he can let you know if there's any issues that you have to start lowering your trailer in case there's something going on. The communications are much safer that way with the CV and it keeps everybody out of harm's way. The third thing I've always found a CV extremely good for is for local information when you get to an area. Um, you're coming up to a truck stop and the truck stop has no parking. That'll be a different episode. We all know how trucking parking is. It's horrible, and you have to spend a lot of your time eating up your clock trying to find it. Well, I found out that if you check for some local information, I always say break one nine for some local information, I might have to ask two or three times, but I will catch somebody in the area that'll say, go ahead, local, what do you need? And I say, look, I need to have a place to park. And they have always helped me in finding places that a regular trucker that's in the area that's not from that area would know. So you can always ask for some local information. The worst thing that happens, you don't get a reply. But in my cases, most of the time, I do get a reply, and that helps me out a lot in finding that. So that is a third valuable reason to have a CB radio with you at all times. Now there's the dark side of the CB radio, which I don't like. And that's where a lot of people just talk on there to hear themselves talk, to start arguments, to always cause problems between other people. Uh, they swear they're annoying. Yes, that is a problem on the CB radio. But that's a problem that can easily be ignored. If you hear somebody like that and they're not helping in the background, just turn the volume down. Or even better yet, turn it off. Eventually, you'll be driving out of that area. You won't have to listen to them anymore. And by not engaging with them, they'll eventually shut up because they won't have anybody to talk to. Yes, it's a negative problem. No, you don't need to scream and holler at them. It's just easier to turn the radio off and ignore it. But that is the only negative I have ever had with the CB radio. Every other aspect of them has always been a positive. So let's get into talking on the radio. There's a lot of radio lingo, there's 10 fork codes, there's all kinds of things out there that you can educate yourself on. In the show notes, I've got some good links that are advertisement friendly, so there's they're neutral, they're not trying to get you to spend any money, and I don't want you to be annoyed by places like that. But there are some good show links I put to get some information on the different codes you may hear some truck drivers out there use. But there's also language that goes along with that besides the codes that may be a little confusing at first. Um, I'll just go through the list alphabetically, and this is by no means an inclusive list. This is just a short list of things you may say. This is a list of things you may hear, and I just want to quickly explain what they are. Affirmative is used in place of yes. Negative is used in place of no. Over means you're done speaking, but you would like a reply, versus out, which means you're signing off and terminating your conversation. There's different 10 codes for that, 10-7, 10-8, but sometimes you'll hear drivers say over or out. Or when they're completely done, they may say over and out, which means they're done speaking and the conversation is over. You may hear a driver when he first comes into his truck for the day and he's not hearing anything, ask for a radio check. All that's him is asking really simply, can you hear me now? And a quick acknowledgement really helps him out in making sure everything is working properly on their end. I hear people ask for radio checks all the time. And if you can just take a second and tell them, yes, driver, I can hear what's going on, it helps. A lot of people will reply with 10-4 but they can also respond with Roger. All that is is 10-4 or Roger confirms that you understand what the other person is saying. Uh, stand by, which is you acknowledge that you heard somebody else, but you can't respond immediately. CB radio is a form and can be a form of distracted driving. You have to keep that in mind. Always concentrate on your driving. If you can't talk to somebody due to something going on, Tell the other person to stand by, put the mic down, don't talk, don't distract yourself. Another one you'll hear all the time is what's your 20? That's 1020 for the CB code. What your 20 is, is where 
you're asking the other person what their location or where their location is at. So that's what your 20 is. And the final one I'm going to hear, which you don't hear as much anymore, but you still will hear it, is 1036. When somebody's asking for a 1036, they just want to know what time it is. Usually a driver will ask for a 1036 because they're looking at a time they need to be specifically at a customer's and they want to make sure they're not late. So that's why you'd hear a 1036. So why are there all of these codes? Why are there all these special words and everything out there? This goes for CB radio etiquette, and it's designed for clear communication. Contrary to their name, CB radios are really only a one-at-a-time communication system. Unlike a cell phone, you cannot speak and listen at the same time, which means when somebody's keyed up on the microphone and talking, no one else can be heard. So you want to think of a short, clear, and concise message that you want to say before you push the talk button and keep the channel open. Uh, this will save a lot of people from having to wait for you to reply. So if it's a three-second question, please make it a three-second question and not a three-minute question. You will do much better at getting responses if you keep your questions short and sweet. Another very important thing to remember about CB radio versus a cell phone is that this is open communications. So do not transmit sensitive or confidential information that you don't want anyone else to hear. There is no way to stop anybody from receiving your messages on the CB radio. So as long as you keep that in mind, then you'll be fine. So my quick tips to finish this episode up. When you go to key up on a CB radio, be prepared to know what you're going to say before you key down the microphone and say it. Keep it short, clear, and concise. Learn the lingo. I have some great links in the show notes showing you all the different things that you can hear out there and whatnot. When you're talking to other people, identify yourself. Um, you can create your own CB handle if you want to. There's a lot of unique ones out there. Uh, indicate when you're finished speaking. So when you're finished talking, say 10-4 or say over. Just something so the other person knows you're done talking. And then remember that this is open communications. Keep it secure by not sharing any kind of sensitive information. Don't give phone numbers over the air. Don't give email addresses over the air. That's not what CB radio is used for. You know, use email for email, your phone for sensitive information, and you should be fine. If you do all of this, you will really enjoy having the CB radio, and the time in aggravation will save you from avoiding detours and accidents. You'll be thanking me for years. And with that, I want to say thank you for tuning in to another edition of the CDL Podcast. To learn more, connect with our community, and get free resources to build your career, please go to thecdlpodcast.com.